praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, so what I was saying is that if that leader is of Jesus Christ, he or she desires that you become like him. Any genuine preacher, pastor, bishop, archbishop, prophet, if they are of Christ, they desire that you become like them and have the knowledge of Jesus and mature in Christ and have the power in Christ Jesus at work within you so that you don't fall a victim to Lucifer and his cohort. I have given you one tip to look out for in your pastors and your bishops that you listen to all the time. If those people don't desire that you become like them, but always at their beg and call, run for your life. Those people are teaching you how to become like them as in knowing Christ and maturing in Christ. They seek your daily welfare, how you grow in the faith in Christ. Not demanding hundred, hundred dollars, fifty, whatever euro for what? For you to come and consult them. Jesus never collected any consultation fee from anybody. We are not in the Old Testament. We are in the New Testament and we are New Testament believers. Enough of the foolishness. Enough of living in ignorance. Wise up, daughter of God, uh, son of God, rise up enough jesus made me to understand that all those who are fueling the ministry of the false prophets and bishops because you think the scripture said that anybody who gives uh, the the prophet uh, and a, a cup of of whatever will have a prophet share if they are false prophets and you are giving them your money they are their part is in the lake of fire you also end up in that same lake of fire and that day you can never go and stand before God and say, ah, Papa, I was ignorant. I didn't know. I didn't know. It's not an excuse. Ignorant is not an excuse. You will perish. You will perish. And we don't want that. So wise up. Wise up, daughters of God, sons of God. Wise up. Know their deeds and do not follow them. Not only shouldn't you follow them, but do not give them your money. Because you are condoning their acts and your, your place will be in the lake of fire with them. So we are all being warned. Verse 13 of the Romans chapter 1. It says, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit, just as I have seen among other Gentiles. Beloved, take note of what a great leader you must associate with in this end time. Someone who desires to see you mature in Christ so much that, that you bear spiritual fruit. The weakness in you is replaced with what? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. And now you live according to the leadings of the Holy Spirit. This only comes through the teachings about our Lord Jesus Christ and his connection to the believer. A place, an assembly, a church, a ministry where you are taught about Jesus Christ and your connection to Jesus and how you have been empowered in this end time to do exploit for God. The doctrines of the Holy Spirit and how you can walk in him. Being led by the Spirit of God. Apostle Paul said that I will want to come and see that work of you bearing spiritual fruit. What fruit are you bearing? You've been in that church. You've been in that ministry one year, two year, three year. What spiritual fruit have you, you, have you bore? Do you see the nine uh, fruit of the Holy Spirit in you? Are you patient in all things? Do you have endurance? In attaining whatever it is that you are seeking in this world, do you have endurance? Do you even know what endurance is about? If they are not teaching you, but they are teaching you how to master money, you have failed. You are in the wrong place. You are in the wrong place. And don't let your mind tell you that being attending a physical church is where God recognized as a church. 
because a time is coming and now is the time the true worshipers will worship god in truth and in spirit so it's not in a physical church locate uh, a physical uh, building that is called a church your body is a church you are a church i am a church get that in your mind beloved get that in your mind we are all the body of christ the church it's not any physical building you tell that to your children you make them to understand my daughter my child it is not the physical building that is church you and i can be here we can worship god and jesus will hear us it is about time we start preparing our, our mind having a change of mindset that mentality is too weak get into the scripture and ask the holy spirit first to give you understanding we are correcting with the word of god that which has been ingrained in our mind right from childhood we are correcting it because some of the doctrine right from childhood is not good it's not right it's not the true way it's not the true deal hallelujah we must you and i must bear spiritual fruits that is visible to the eye so before if you used to be a gossip now the spirit of god in you worked your patience wicked holiness in you sanctification in you that you cease to gossip you don't call that sister on the phone and begin to talk about the other sister and what he or she did no you don't do that anymore when you call that sister it is to ask a simple question and get out of the phone or talk about christ with the person and how the revelations you are getting in the word of god if not conversation cease not to talk about a movie that you watch and how funny it was all those things does not edify it does not edify anything that is void of jesus is meaningless it is meaningless hallelujah paul saw it as an obligation to teach both the educated and the uneducated alike he wanted to teach those who are not educated who don't have any educational background and the and the elite those who are educated there are so many so called preachers and pastors in this end time who only want to preach to intellectuals or the rich folks watch out for such wolves in sheep clothing when you go to their church all you see is the intellectuals those in the university and the colleges those who are medical professionals and whatever they are the ones they want to minister to what about those who are perishing in the remote places in the villages they don't des deserve to be part of the kingdom watch out for those such people jesus came to call fishermen and impart gifts into them so whatever you are education or no education jesus can use you in his kingdom that is what in this ministry we want you to understand we are not going by anybody's education and how much you know theology or whatever it is that you may know we are going by the spirit of god at move and at work in us verse 16 and 17 it says for i am not ashamed of this good news about christ it is the power of god at work saving everyone who believes I am not what ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power at work saving everyone who believes. Beloved, you get saved when you hear the good news over and over and over and over and over again. You are saved from diabetes, you are saved from hypertension, you are saved from depression, you are saved from anxiety, you are saved from oppression, you are saved from suppression, you are saved from anything that torments you at night that is not able to let you sleep. The suicide thoughts and everything. If the sermon that you are listening is Christ centered. Any preacher and I'll keep hammering it because in this end time the wolves are more than the good ones. Any preacher any so called preacher whose message is not jesus christ centered is ashamed of the gospel i know of one preacher a mega preacher i think they said uh, 
He has the largest congregation in the entire United States. I've never listened to a single sermon, though I don't listen to him, but the few that I've heard him preach when I used to watch TBN. He never preached about Christ. He always takes something in Proverbs, he talks about the love of God and the few good messages. He never preached about Christ. I've asked other people who have heard him preach. He never preached. Such a person you must run away from. Any message that is not Christ-centered, that person is ashamed of the gospel. They have been bribed not to preach the gospel. Or they have been silenced by the enemy not to preach the gospel. They've been shut up by the money, the tithe and the offering, the money that is coming in by the big, big people. Why? Because as many times as you hear about Jesus and what he is to you, more power is given to you to overcome your anxiety in life, your depressions in life, your oppressions and suppressions of any kind. The more Jesus is being talked to you, the more power to you. So many have been in dead churches for more than six months and they have never feel or think God even hears them when they pray. Because their problems keep compounding every second. So many people and they are questioning. I, I think I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm, the, my sins are too much that my past things has catch up with me. Who told you that? Your past things, your past things, your past le life never, because in the world system, they have karma. Whatever it is, karma. They said, whatever you do will catch up with you. If you come to Christ, if you run to Jesus, and every day you hear about him, you are a new creation. He will hold nothing against you. He will hold nothing against you. So if your preacher is not telling you about Jesus, sister, run for your life, brother. Run for your life. It is not going to help you edify your spirit to overcome that negativity in you, that slavery in you. Praise the Lord. How much of the gospel do you know? How much of the good news has, has, has been preached to you? Our power as believers lies or is inside the message of the cross about Jesus Christ. But how do you get empowered when you are you, you, you are listening to a series of marathon preaching about how to master money 101, how to master money series 1 to 10, and your entire year is filled with series of bogus messages never centered on Jesus Christ being crucified for the righteousness of God. I remember when my, my husband was in uh, Iowa. He, he used to go to a white church. And all he talks about is how to master money. Series 1, to The whole month is how to master money. The next month is how to be financially whatever. The whole year, no salvation message was preached to him. So imagine this is where you go to church for the entire time of your life. You are doomed. You are doomed. You will be in that church and will never make heaven. Verse 18 to 20 says, Never you fret, be worried, jealous of wicked people who have too much money to spend and waste. Never be upset with people who are into abominable speech practices like homosexuality, lesbianism, or natural affection. You know, atheists, those who don't believe in Jesus, those who sleep with animals, for the wrath of God is already upon them. I'm summarizing what is between 18 and 20. God has given clear evidence in the universe he created that he is indeed the creator of all. So no human being has an excuse on the day of judgment. And if you are a genuine believer, never argue with anyone who, want to, who is asking you to show him proof or evidence of the existence of God or Jesus. Don't waste your time on that person. For the clear evidence is their conscience which knows the truth, but yet denies it. And they insist on doubting who God is. Never you argue. Never you enter into any form of argument 
No, don't do it. In their conscience, all those gay and lesbians and whatever, they know the act that they are in. It's the demon of per perversion that has possessed them. Never you entertain them as friends. You can be hello high with them, but never you entertain them as friends, condoning their act. If you are friends with them, you are condoning their act. You can be on good terms as in hello, hi, how are you doing? And be giving them the love of Jesus and tell them Jesus loved them. They must repent and, and come to the grace. But never you befriend them, thinking you can win them by befriending them. You don't befriend them. When Paul went to the Greece and, and the Eph Ephesus, he didn't go to befriend them. He go to mingle to see what, the, what they are doing. Try to understand them and then try to reason with them. He wasn't friends with them. So that's the warning to all those who are entertaining and, and, and having best friends who are gay and homosexuals and whatever. You are condoning that act. You and that person is on the same scale before God. I tell you the truth. Verse 21 to 27. Uh, the summary there. I think uh, I took a verse out of some of them. It says, even the women turn against the natural way to have sex. They turn away, they turn against the natural way to have sex and instead indulge in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burn with lust for each other. On this note, I am speaking to, if you have a husband, who wants you to put his manhood in your mouth and suck them in the morning? It's a sin against God. That is unnatural. It's not the normal sexual relation they should have with women. So women of God do not tolerate or entertain that. And don't you think that God said we should be submissive means you, you should do anything that is abominable to God? No. No. For two will be lying down on the, on the rapture day. One will be taken, one will be left. Don't put your husband's manhood inside your mouth to bring him satisfaction. That is not how they should be satisfied. That is not the normal sexual relation. The husbands who are sleeping, having sex through the, the butthole, the honor of women, please, Resist, desist from that. Stop. Men, we, you must honor the women. In honoring them, you don't mess up their anus to satisfy your uh, uh, abnormal sexual desires, which is demonic. You need deliverance immediately. You need to deliver yourself from that wicked way. That is the spirit of perversion at work in you. Wives, never you allow any husband of yours to sleep with you through your, your anus. Thinking you love the person, you don't want to lose the person. If the person is threatening you with divorce, let them go. Let them divorce you and remain unmarried because of heaven. If you are serious to enter heaven, if your husband is telling you put your his manhood in your mouth or inside your bottle, don't do it, woman. Don't do it. For heaven's sake, don't do it. That is abnormal desire. It's going to take them to hellfire. You pray for that man. You pray for them. Praise the Lord. You pray for them. And know that the Lord does not desire that Anybody should do that in any way. The pen would last for each other. Homosexuality is a perversion spirit that has possessed them. We must pray for all of those people. Many is said about, uh, um, say, many is said about mankind knowing God in their conscience, but choose to worship snakes, elephants, cows. When you go to India, they are worshiping elephants, cows, snakes. Wooden status, clay status, women practicing lesbianism, act, an act that is what? Abomination. If you are still in that situation where you insert your fingers into your yourself, it's in, it's, 
if you're a woman into your vagina for sexual satisfaction, you need deliverance immediately to cast out that demon of lust and perversion. We must stick to reading and meditating the word of God. When that evil desires come in, get yourself a Bible, get yourself an, a worship song, begin to worship God, begin to acknowledge God. And as you are acknowledging God and, and, and worshiping, that desire will run away. I tell you the truth, it works. Begin to lift your voice in worship and praise Jesus. If you have any sexual perversion, a desire to satisfy your own self, begin to lift worship and begin to worship God. And that desire, uh, that wicked thing will run away. When you call on the name of Jesus, that wickedness will run away. That unnatural desire for, uh, for women by men is when they command uh, uh, the women to do the unholy thing. It's not good. It is wrong before God. It is wrong before God. That is abnormal sexual relationship with women. None of those abominable acts would inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. When you read the verse 28 to 32, it says, Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling. So if you're a child of God, you still quarrel with your sister, your husband, and everybody. Then you are not repented yet. You are not a believer. You are just a church goer. You are a joke. God doesn't know you. You need to repent. Deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. If you are still gossiping in the house of God, in churches, quit. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, boastful. They invent new ways of sinning. See how the scientists are now combining a pig with a dog. A pig with a human being, a dog with a human being, inventing new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. This is for the young, the young ones. Disobedience to parents. They want to rebel. They don't, they don't want to uh, help their parents in any way, acknowledge them in any way. These are all demonic spirits that need to be delivered. They refuse to understand. They break their promises. They are heartless. And they have no mercy. You see the massacres in, in, in churches, on the streets, everywhere. People are without mercy. They, are, they become heartless. All because they've allowed their souls to be what? To be possessed. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die. Yet they do them anyways. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Beloved, if you are encouraging people, meaning you are befriending those people, you are encouraging, you are condoning sin, the wrath of God remains on you. You will die as they will. Not die as in the natural death, but eternal death in hellfire. Think through all these things that we've mentioned in Romans chapter 1. If there be any of them that you fall short, know that you are part of those God hates. Many women or ladies do backstabbing, stabbing friends behind them. I've heard stories where a lady introduced a man she wanted to marry to her friend, her best friend, a girl. The friend took over the man and got married to the man who was her friend's uh, 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 man to, to marry. No backstabber will inherit the kingdom of, of God. No backstabber. Those who have no mercy, you have enough money to support the kingdom of God, to make monthly commitment to help spread the good news. But you use that money to subscribe to cable channels where you can watch hundreds of movies that even include pornography channel. You have money to support the kingdom business, but you use that to subscribe to channels to watch pornography. You use the money to buy dog food, dog animal dog dog food you use that money to to take your cat to pet care to have their nails done when the kingdom of god have not enough to spread the good news 
the kingdom of God suffer. They don't have enough money to feed the poor, the orphans, the widows. And you are using that monthly commitment to watch cable news, to watch uh, movies. People are paying monthly Netflix and other, other payments so that they can watch hundreds of movies as they want. But they will never commit to help the kingdom grow. They have no mercy. It's part of the sin that was committed. They are heartless. They have no heart, no love for God or his work. The true act of serving God is to take care of the poor, those in prison, those in needy. Visit the prisoners. Not just to pray for them to be fed. Praying that, oh God, have mercy on them. But you don't support physically with your money. You have not done anything, sister. Brother, you've not done anything. The pride in your heart is so much that you cannot submit to the word of God that is being preached to you. You know deep within that what we are saying is true. But because of pride, you brush it off. The kingdom of God can never and will never tolerate prideful souls. We must all repent from any secret sins that can hinder our making heaven. Jesus carried all our sins to the cross so that we would die to ourselves. We would die to self. Now, if you truly believe the message about the cross, why are you still holding on to so many things against your brother and sister or anybody? Why? Someone dead to something has no feelings. We don't rejoice when we hear the downfall of anyone, even if we know publicly that that person hates us. You don't rejoice when people get hurt, when people are in trouble. You don't rejoice. You pray with them. You pray for them. You show them kindness and mercy. May our Lord Jesus be formed well in us. If we really want to make heaven, may he be formed well in us so that we shall mature in faith. May he help us to overcome all in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus loves you and so do I. God bless you.